The International Space Station has been orbiting Earth for decades now. In that time, it has provided some incredible science and discoveries, along with innovations and much more. However, the laboratory continues to age and costs billions of dollars each year. For these reasons, among others, NASA decided the station was nearing the end of its life and would be decommissioned in the coming years. After discussion and extensions, currently the retirement date is scheduled to happen in 2031. However, just days ago, we learned more about the agency's plan to do this and what it's going to cost them. Specifically, when the White House released its 2024 federal budget request, NASA's $27.2 billion allocation included $108 million to initiate development of a new space tug that could safely deorbit the ISS over the open ocean after its operational life ends. Here I'll go more in depth into the new space tug NASA is working on, the overall ISS transition plan, what to expect in the coming years, and more. Just yesterday on the 13th, NASA released additional details about its fiscal year 2024 budget proposal. With this came a 7.1% increase in the budget from 2023. However, one of the biggest new initiatives is the budget in the ISS deorbit tug, which would be used to perform the final lowering of the station's orbit to ensure it re-enters over the South Pacific. Large tugs that dock with satellites in orbit may be able to perform services like refueling or repairs or enhancements, as well as changing the satellite's orbit, whether that is to extend the life of a satellite or to deorbit it. The $180 million NASA is requesting for the tug gives us a healthy start for the project, said Kathy Luters, NASA Associate Administrator for Space Operations, in a media teleconference about the budget. In reality, the budget documents didn't include a full spending profile for the project. However, she said the agency came up with a cost estimate a little bit short of about $1 billion. She also commented, Our goal is to go out with a request for proposals, and then, obviously, when we get the proposals, then we're hoping to get a better price than that but this gives us a healthy start in 24 to get that critical capability on board. The current plan for bringing the station down safely relies upon engine burns by robotic progress spacecraft vehicles, which are provided by Russia. But we're also developing the U.S. capability as a way to have redundancy and be able to better aid the targeting of the vehicle and the safe return of the vehicle, especially as we're adding more modules, she said. As you've seen in the past and over this last year, us having these redundancies has been very, very important for both ourselves and our partners. And so, having a U.S. deorbit vehicle is another key area in our space operations and deorbit strategy of the ISS. This factor becomes even more important with some of the recent issues the Russian spacecraft have experienced. For example, the Soyuz crew spacecraft lost all of its coolant to space on December 14, 2022, and a Progress spacecraft sprang a leak of its own on February 11th. Even though Russia has attributed the Soyuz leak to a likely micrometeoroid strike and linked the Progress issue to an external influence, Perhaps a problem incurred during launch, the investigation into the two leaks continues. With such an important event such as deorbiting the ISS, the U.S. wants to make sure they have reliable options, something we can hope to receive more updates on in the near future. The process of deorbiting the ISS takes a lot of planning and consideration from every party involved. Right now, the ISS is entering an era of robust commercial use, taking advantage of the utilities provided by the ISS to develop the capabilities industry needs to move from being dependent on NASA for space station utilization to providing the platform the agency will need to continue its mission in LEO after the lifetime of the ISS. Commercial crew and cargo transportation are well-known examples of the commercial ecosystem supporting ISS, and today they provide the vital lifeline from Earth to the ISS. Keeping the station up and running until 2030 is intended to give proper time for the commercial industry and companies like Axiom Space to develop its technology. As far as the actual deorbit of the station, NASA and the ISS International Partners remain vigilant regarding the safe operation of the ISS. Based on the station's structural health analysis performed to date, there is high confidence that ISS life can be further extended through 2030. In a NASA report, they commented, the technical lifetime of the ISS is limited by the primary structure, which includes the modules, radiators, and truss structures. Other systems, such as power, environmental control and life support, and communications are all repairable or replaceable on orbit. The lifetime of the primary structure is affected by dynamic loading, such as vehicle docking slash undockings, and orbital thermal cycling. Each ISS international partner is responsible for performing life extension analysis for its own modules and structures. NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, European Space Agency, and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency have completed life extension analysis through 2028. Roscosmos has completed its extension analysis through 2024 and is working on analyzing extension through 2030. In the nominal scenario, ISS Mission Control will be scheduling retrograde ISS maneuvers in the lead-up to the ISS deorbit to begin slowly lowering the operational altitude of the ISS. A provided figure shows that these retrograde maneuvers may start at different times depending on the solar cycle activity and its effect on Earth's atmosphere. 
In this case, higher solar activity tends to expand the Earth's atmosphere and increase resistance to the ISS velocity, resulting in more drag and natural altitude loss. This lower altitude results in higher velocity overall. Eventually, after performing maneuvers to line up the final target ground track and debris footprint over the South Pacific Oceanic Uninhabited Area, the area around Point Nemo, ISS operators will perform the ISS reentry burn, providing the final push to lower the ISS as much as possible and ensure safe atmospheric reentry. The ISS will accomplish the deorbit maneuvers by using propulsion capabilities of the ISS and possibly the new space tug under development. As far as what's next, by engaging with industry early in the development phase of CLDs, NASA is helping to ensure that these commercial systems will be safe and eventually meet the agency's requirements. NASA will be able to transfer its knowledge and experience from over 20 years of ISS operations to the private sector, while the companies will be able to quickly mature innovative and cost-effective designs. This public-private partnership for the early phase of CLD development will leverage the strengths of both entities to produce safe, reliable, and cost-effective CLDs. After Axiom, Blue Origin, NanoRax, and Northrop Grumman have matured their designs and business models over the next couple of years, NASA intends to have a second phase of activity whereby the agency contracts one or more entities to certify their designs as safe and to purchase services from the CLD providers. The second phase, which will be a full and open competition, is similar to the Commercial Crew Transportation Capabilities contracts NASA awarded to SpaceX and Boeing for the Commercial Crew program. Thus, the agency is building on a successful legacy of their commercial crew and cargo programs that are currently delivering important research, supplies, and NASA and international partner astronauts to the ISS. These activities are hoping to enable the development of commercially owned and operated LEO destinations that are safe, reliable, and cost-effective. With the introduction of this process, NASA expects to realize efficiencies from the use of innovative, efficient, and cost-effective platforms using a more commercial approach to meeting the agency's needs in LEO. As commercial LEO destinations become available, NASA intends to implement an orderly transition from the current ISS operations to these new CLDs. The transition of LEO operations to the private sector is expected to yield efficiencies in the long term, enabling NASA to shift more financial and personal resources toward deep space exploration objectives. As both the supply and demand activities mature through the mid to late 2020s, NASA will continue to assess the readiness to transition to commercial services and destinations through a number of transition indicators something we can look forward to in the coming years. NASA is in the process of trying to determine the best way to deorbit the massive International Space Station. While the initial plan involved using multiple Russian spacecraft for the operation, the agency would be more comfortable if they also had a specially designed space tug for the job. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.